Starting our morning journey here as we head out to Antelope Hill Provincial Park, we decided to stop here and take some pictures at West Hope School. Now I'm not sure what the fate of the school is going to be. West Hope School was for sale not that long ago. I don't see any for sale signs or anything here. So I'm, I'm assuming the property sold. Don't know what the new owners have in terms of intentions for the old building. Now, several years ago, this gate used to be open and I was actually able to get into the school and get some photos inside and of the cairn that we see in the yard there. But now it's currently marked no trespassing, which is a real shame because this was a great school that uh, I really wish more people had access to, to see and appreciate. So I'll include uh, some of the photos from, from that previous visit. I can't remember as I'm recording this, whether that was 2006 or 2008, but we got a bit of a later start than we wanted today. So we are going to get back on the road and get moving. Well, after two and a half hours on the road, we have reached our destination. And you can see this is the Antelope Hill Ranch, or at least it was the Antelope Hill Ranch. The land was donated to the province of Alberta in 2014 by Gottlieb Schmidt with the intention that it become a provincial park. Now, he had a deal with the province that they wouldn't do that until he was no longer living on the land. And apparently around 2018 or so, he was no longer able to live out here and moved into Hanna nearby, just south of here. And the province then began the construction required to turn this into a provincial park. My understanding is that it became a provincial park in uh, late 2021. So I do believe this is the first year that the park has actually been open for public access. So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is actually the newest provincial park in Alberta. And I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone will correct me. So this appears to be his, or the original sign for the, uh, for the ranch entrance. And the original ranch gates. And here we are. Antelope Hill Provincial Park. So this is a day use only park. There's no camping, there's no motorized vehicles. It's purely a get out and go for a walk and check out the uh, landscape type park. So at the parking area here, you can tell, I mean, it is a Friday afternoon, but we are the only people here today. So that's not unusual, I suspect. Um, the park, I think, is not necessarily that well known being that new. Um, I only found out about it because I saw a Facebook post from the government of Alberta announcing it as being open for uh, visitors. So a few picnic tables here by the entrance. And then a plaque here describing Antelope Provincial Park. So yeah, this describes the history here where Smitty settled in the area in 1933, bought out his brother and his father by the time 1958 rolled around. And uh, then this became a provincial park. So Schmidt used the land for raising cattle. 
So this is a very unique piece of Alberta Prairie landscape in the sense of this land has never been cultivated and is essentially full-on native grassland as it uh, would have existed for, well, pretty much for as long as this has been an area that hasn't been under a uh, glacial lake. Now, Schmidt is no longer with us. I believe he died in 2018. So, um, well, I guess that's all there is to say about that. So we're coming up what would have obviously been the driveway of the old homestead. And on the official Alberta Parks map, it actually shows uh, the location of the homestead and it had some outlines of buildings. Now I don't know if there's actually any buildings here or if there's any interpretive signage about the buildings or if they acknowledge they're present at, at all other than what's on the map. But we'll find out when we get up here. Now I'm assuming this is kind of the old homestead site. The terrain suddenly changed here. You can tell where there was native grassland is now turned into something that's been clear cut. There's a lot of thrash and debris along the ground and looks like a pile of trash here by this down tree. Yes, definitely not one or what one normally expects when coming to a provincial park, but a lot of debris here, looks like some wire, some cabling, some old fence. So they've obviously done some cleanup of the homestead site and left a bunch of the debris behind. I don't know if that's with the intention of eventually coming back to clean it up, I would think so. A lot of bricks and things here. Pitchfork, <laughs> new pitchfork, not vintage. So yeah, it appears to be no, no buildings or anything left, no signs to indicate what was here or how it was laid out. Uh, frankly, a little bit surprised that the government opened it up to the public while still in this kind of condition. So made it out here to the southeastern corner of what I'm calling the homestead getting back out into the natural grasslands. There's another parcel over here that seems to be in a building-like shape, so there possibly was something here as well at one point. Here's another area. This one's a bit larger. This could have been a barn at one point, but uh, Nothing left except some trash, some old pieces of carpet. Now, actually, this whole cultivated section goes quite a ways down that way, so maybe it wasn't a, uh, a barn. Some random pieces of metal, probably from a machine of some sort. I am most interested to know if anyone has any photos of the site before it became a park open for public access. I know I saw one posting online from someone who had gotten permission to visit the site. I think it was like in 2016 before it was open. So I don't know, I don't remember seeing any photos there, but I'd love to know what was here 
fence post here so maybe that area at the top of the hill was a barn and this area over on the right was maybe like a uh, cattle pen or something of that nature and that explains why this section of land is so different looking than uh, the surrounding landscape. So you can see the line in the grass here where somebody's come through with some sort of off-road vehicle. So we're just going to kind of follow these for a little bit and see if we spot anything of interest further in. You can see down there a low spot that would normally be filled with water. It's very dry this year. It seems like it's been a late spring. I mean, we're into early June now, and it seems like a lot of the trees and things are just starting to come out, and it feels like we're about two weeks behind where we normally are at this time of the year. And you can tell it hasn't been that long since there was cattle on this land. Still lots of game trails I was just exploring in this stand of trees and you can definitely see lots of cattle trails where they would have huddled in there to get out of the wind and the prairie storms and things. I don't know if the microphone will pick this up, but the grass out here is very crunchy underneath our feet an indication of just how dry it is this year so also on the park map along the north side of the park boundary it had a site marked for antelope school so we're going to kind of pick our way over into a high point here and see if we can spot the school from the south and if not we will uh, drive over that way after we leave the park. But for now, we're just kind of following these old cattle trails in the general north direction. So we kind of reached this hilltop. It's kind of a bit of a high point on the land. Wind is a lot stronger here. Over on the horizon you can see alkaline soil being picked up in the air. We thought it was going to be a grass fire initially. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera. It sure looks like a grass fire, but we had a line of sight on it when we came through on the drive up here and it was definitely not a grass fire so just an indication again of how dry and windy things are today so we see the school marker over there along the road i was hoping there was still going to be some sort of school building but it doesn't look like it but we may as well complete our walk and head over that direction and then we'll work our way back to the car. So here we are coming up on the backside of the Antelope Hill school sign. So we'll take a closer look at that and I can add it to my list of historical school sites that I have visited. See how good I am at reading my backwards writing. Obviously the top says Antelope Hill, bottom SD School District, 
3286 from 1916 to 1938. Really nothing at the site to indicate exactly where the school sat. I don't even really see any disturbances in the vegetation that would give an indication that there had once been a foundation here. So if the school existed up until 1938, it operated for about five years after the Schmitz settled in this area. So there would have been a school here when they first started homesteading this land. but. I don't know when the school was demolished, but it's probably been gone for a few decades now. Undoubtedly, it's been gone longer than it ever stood here. So as we work our way back towards the car, I'm going to throw out some thoughts I have about the park as it exists today. Number one, am I glad that it exists? Yes, we can always use more publicly accessible lands and provincial parks. So that is a very nice touch. Is it worth driving two and a half hours? Probably not. I mean, I'm glad we did. It has an interesting historical background behind it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a long way to drive to just go for a walk on the prairie. I'm sure we could have found something closer to home that would yield the same sort of experience. I also feel a little bit disappointed so far with what the province has done. The, uh, the garbage at the old homestead site really needs some effort there to clean that up. I mean, I can understand if there were old buildings here why the government would think they need to take them down for public safety reasons. But by the same token, if you're going to, you know, open an area up for public access and be concerned about public safety, why wouldn't you clean the area up of the trash and debris before you let the public in? Now, I don't want anyone interpreting those comments as me saying the government needs to develop this into a park, if you will. I am quite okay with the fact that there are no defined trails or maintained trails. I mean, I'm okay with the fact that it's essentially 900 plus acres that are free for you to explore as you see fit. I really like the fact that it's really peaceful and quiet. We haven't seen really any other vehicles on the surrounding roads. There's been no other people in the park here. And uh, that's really nice. It's nice to be able to go somewhere, get away from the crowds and really enjoy the wide open skies and the endless prairie landscape. So I hope they don't screw it up and overdevelop it. I would like to see them do a little bit of something in terms of maybe some interpretive signs out at the homestead site to give you a little bit more background about what was here. Because let's face it, if I hadn't done my reading beforehand to learn about the history of this piece of land and why this is a provincial park, you really wouldn't know. Yes, there's the plaque at the entrance, but it doesn't give you a lot of context. So it's a park with a lot of potential. And again, by potential, I don't mean paving pathways, building camp kitchens and campgrounds or anything like that. I simply mean do a little bit more with what's here so people can appreciate the history. I think it'd be cool if a local rancher made some horses for trail rides available, maybe one Saturday a month or something, so you could come and ride the range or maybe have a little cowboy campfire, cook things over the fire, get the full ranching experience. That's uh, 
section there in those trees looks like that may have been the dugout at one point for the homestead. It seems a little bit unnatural and a little bit greener than uh, some of the surrounding lands. Yeah, I think I can see some water through those trees. And uh, as Emily just said, and this is a pile of dirt here was likely excavated from the dugout. Undoubtedly would have been one of the first things they did after establishing a shelter here. So it's a pretty safe bet to say this dirt mound that I'm now climbing, which is going to leave me out of breath and huffing and puffing into the microphone, has been here since the 1930s. And there is the water in the dugout. Obviously, was a sanctuary and lifeline for cattle for many years. And now today is still providing sanctuary and lifeline for the uh, aquatic species and birds that pass through this area. There's another look. I believe that's supposed to be or is marked on the map as Dowling Lake but it doesn't look like there's any water there. And like I said, I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but there's just like miniature tornadoes of alkaline soil being blown into the air. And it continues to look like a grass fire over there. So we don't really have any targets for our way home. So I'm going to assume that this is kind of the end of the video for today. I'm glad you were able to come along. I just wanted to say that thanks to your subscriptions, according to socialblade.com, Dan O'Can is the 3,405th ranked YouTube channel in Canada. Doesn't sound like much, but considering I didn't think we would ever get anyone besides my immediate family to subscribe, I think we're doing really well. We are getting closer and closer with every vote, or vote, with every subscription, we're getting closer to that magical 1,000 subscriber mark where YouTube starts to take you seriously. So if you haven't already, I always, I don't like asking because it's such a stereotypical YouTuber thing to do. But if you haven't, click the subscribe button. I won't suggest that you click the bell because, I mean, come on. Really, you don't need to know. <laughs> as long as you're subscribed, you'll find out when we've got new stuff on the channel. So I just wanted to say thank you again for everyone's support. We get a lot of great comments. It's been really fun. We continue to enjoy what we're doing. We'll see you in the next one.